Today's video is going to be about Clips Studio Paint. So I have to be honest, I actually didn't know what this video was going to be about. So I actually went on to Instagram and asked you guys what my next video should be about and I got about a hundred answers to that question. And many of you have asked me to do a video on Clips Studio Paint and the way I use it. So I just thought that would be a really great idea and um, so here I am. So basically what you see on the screen is Clips Duo Paint, the way it looks when you open it up for the first time. And the first thing you want to do is you want to go to File, New, and this is a screen where you can set up your canvas. And your canvas is basically your paper. So what I like to do first is I like to give it a name and for this video demo, I, I would just call it video demo. That's really original, I guess. <laughs> and next up is the width, the height and the resolution. So basically width and height, it's kind of self-explanatory. I just set it to 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. It gives me a nice square canvas. And the resolution is really important. So if you ever want to print out any of your artwork, set it to 300 or higher. So next up, you want to click on OK. And from here, um, I want to show you kind of like an overview of the interface when it comes to Clip Studio Paint and also the tools that I like to use most often. So the interface is pretty basic, but right now I think it's kind of messy. I, I do not use it this way. So let's just clean it up real quick to the point where I like it. So I, I want to get rid of all of this unnecessary stuff that I never use and I'm just going to quickly run through them and kind of hide all of these menus because I do not like them. I never use them and they just kind of clunk up my, my, my um, canvas or my workspace. So let's just get rid of a few here. So basically you just pull them out and you press X and kind of repeat the, repeat the process for everything you do not need. Maybe there's a quicker way to do this, but this is just how I like to do it. And don't worry, you don't have to do this all the time. This is just the first time you use Clip Studio Paint. And basically this is how I like to use Clip Studio Paint. I have the color, the color wheel up here. I have some settings for my brushes and my layers. I have my layer palette and I have my brushes down here. So on the left, we have the toolbar, this thing right here. So we have a bunch of different tools. I do not use all of them, but a few of them. For example, I, I use the, the brush tools down here and the blending tool the gradient tool, the bucket tool, and sometimes I like to use the ruler tool. So the first thing I want to show you is obviously the brush tool. So I have a few different brushes loaded into here. These do not come with every installation of Clip Studio Paint because they are custom made, but you can basically check them out and get them at my Gumroad, which I'll link below in the description. So the first brush is called Pencil. This is my sketching brush. It kind of imitates a real pencil and it's probably one of my most favorite brushes ever. So it's it's kind of smooth and really it has this creaminess to it. So if I zoom in you can basically see the texture of it and you can tell that it's not really realistic compared to a real pencil but it still gives me this texture and it, it, it just feels great when I'm sketching and I just love it. it. It's really my most favorite brush when it comes to sketching and doing my, my first concepts whenever I'm working on a new illustration. So I like to use this brush a lot. Next up is a brush called Hotline. And this basically works the same as the hard run brush that comes with any painting software. But it's again a little bit creamier and it allows me to, plan to blend colors more easily because of the softness of it, but it's still not too soft to the point where it's kind of like an airbrush or it looks kind of fake and, and washy. So it still has that hardness to it, but um, there's some creaminess that I really like. I'm, I'm always looking for that, for that buttery feeling. Um, I don't know what it is, but I just love it. And I guess that's how I get the texture of my skin. So so whenever I'm painting whenever I'm painting skin, I use this brush because it gives me a nice texture for it. 
And again, if I zoom in, you can see that there's a little bit of a texture and I'm always looking for that. Because the problem is, and this is what I see many times, especially with beginners when they start painting digitally, they use the airbrush too often. And I'm, I, I don't want to talk bad about the airbrush. It, it really um, works really good for specific situations. But beginners, they tend to use the airbrush a lot. So they paint almost exclusively with the airbrush. And what happens is their, their final image is going to be really soft and it's going to look fake. And um, yeah, you're going to lose a lot of detail and, and realism when you're only using the airbrush. So uh, of course, I'm using the airbrush as well from time to time, but I use it a little bit differently. So um, this was the hotline brush. I like to use this a lot when I'm painting. So um, I want to show you the airbrush tool. I call mine the Air Gordon, Air Jordan, Air Gordon. You get it? <laughs> I guess it's kind of lame. Anyway, so um, the airbrush is just a soft brush. But what I like to use it for, let's say I have an area and it's, it's just really messy and stuff. I just take my airbrush and instead of like painting with the airbrush, like painting a complete image with it, I just like to use it to clean up certain areas to make it a little bit nicer, less messy. And, and this is all I use the airbrush for. I do not use it for painting in the skin or something. I just like to use it to clean up or to finalize a, a certain area of my painting. And that's it. Because you can really mess up your painting with the airbrush if it gets too soft. Because a, like if, if, and if, if your painting is too soft, it, it's just going to look really bad. So don't overdo it with the airbrush. You want to find a nice balance between hard edges and soft edges. And I mean, go ahead and study it. Like look at the masters, like old masters of painting and see how they've used hard edges and soft edges to kind of make their paintings a little bit more interesting and realistic. So um, yeah, that's just my 50 cents when it comes to like painting theory, I guess. So anyway, so Bristly Bear is a brush that is also really cool. I like to use it for when I'm painting hair because I mean, obviously, if you look at it, it already gives me like the the illusion, the illusion of hair strands. So I like to use it when I'm painting hair. But other than that, I do not use it too often. I used to use it way more, but not anymore, to be honest. But still, it's a great brush. Um, you can use it for a lot of things. So one thing that I like to do with my brushes and why I switch them up so often is because when I'm painting digitally and this goes like it, it kind of um, goes along with the with the airbrush the problem is that digital paintings look too perfect or too clean many times so I like to break it up by kind of implementing texture to my paintings so I add texture with different brushes so I have a brush called blockbuster and when I'm painting with it you can see that it, it kind of has this rich this really rich texture to it and so when I'm painting or blocking in colors, I use a brush like this to kind of add texture to my paintings and to kind of break up that, that perfection that you get from painting digitally. Because I, I really don't want that clean look. Because if you look at like realistic paintings, they always have texture from the brushes and the different materials and paints. And that's, when I, that's what I kind of want to replicate when I'm painting digitally. digitally and I do that by switching up my brushes and kind of adding texture back into the painting with these different brushes. And I have all kinds of different brushes to do this. I have a brush called Jitters and basically this brush switches between your foreground and your background color and it adds a really nice effect. So as you guys can see, if I press really lightly onto the pen, it paints kind of bluish and if I press harder onto it, it paints pinkish. And um, yeah, it, it's just to break up that perfection that happens when you're painting digitally. And I see this oftentimes when I look at digital paintings or digital artwork. It's just so clean and there's no life to it, no character. And so I really would advise you guys to kind of introduce some texture to your paintings. Um, just to kind of add some, some life back into your art. And so yeah, this is just a quick overview of some of the brushes that I use. Again, you can download them at my Gumroad shop. I'll post a link below in the description and you can check them out. 
and um, see if you like them or not. And you can always kind of manipulate them later on to fit your personal painting style. This is what I do all the time. I just kind of play around with my brushes and I change them all the time. So sometimes I'm not happy with them and I just edit them to the point where I'm happy with them. So moving on, we have, a, okay, we have an eraser. I'm not going to explain the eraser tool. Um, we have the blending tool. The blending tool is also awesome in Clip Studio Paint. And I use this a lot, like believe me, I use this so often. And this is probably one of the main reasons why I do not switch programs. This is why I why I stay with Clip Studio Paint. It's probably because of the blending tool. It's so awesome. So basically, um, it just blends your colors. So let's just um, paint something right here and I can show it to you a little bit better. So let's just take a blue color, um, pink, what else, um, maybe yellow. And so the way I would usually um, blend colors is, and I still do this. It's kind of like a mixture. You don't want to use only one technique. But the way you would you uh, the way you would blend colors usually is you select one of the colors and paint into the other one, and then use your color pillow, uh, color picker to paint back into the other one until you have a nice and soft gradient going on. And this is how you would blend colors. So this is really awesome. But another way I like to do it is by using the blend tool. So I go to the blend tool over here. It's the symbol with the two water drops. And what you do is you basically just wiggle your pen between the two colors you want to blend. And it's like magic. It just does it. So if you just check this out, it's just insane. Like it's so easy and quick. And I just love this technique. It's, it's so much fun. And I know that Photoshop has something similar called the smudge tool, but it's in no way as good as the blend tool in here in Clip Studio Paint. So this is probably my favorite feature of Clip Studio Paint, if I'm really honest. So what else is there? There's the gradient tool, the bucket tool. Okay, so we have, um, oh yeah, we have rulers. Rulers are awesome. So rulers, basically they act kind of like guidelines and your brush kind of follows their path. So you can use a ruler kind of like a circle, a circular ruler to kind of draw um whoops i didn't want to do that so let's undo that so basically you you can use a circular ruler to kind of draw circles and, and stuff like that uh, because it's kind of difficult to draw perfect circles but you can also um use a, a ruler to draw in symmetry which is even more awesome i guess so so symmetry you may think is kind of like a gimmick um you don't really need it but i believe it's a really cool feature especially for when you're drawing like a straight on portrait portrait where everything has to be in symmetry or close to symmetry um many times what happens to me is i would draw one eye like let's say i'm drawing the left eye and then i draw the second eye and the second eye is kind of off. It doesn't look right. And so I have to go back in there, erase it and fix it. And so with symmetry, you're already drawing in symmetry and everything is going to be perfectly symmetrical. So yeah, go see if you like it. And if it's something that actually um, enhances your workflow. So you always have to see, do I need this feature or not? Because we're all different. We all need tools for different purposes. So you need to figure it out on your own. I can only tell you what I use and kind of inspire you or give you a behind the scenes look of my workflow. But in the end, you have to see for yourself if this is something that kind of improves your workflow or if it doesn't do anything for you, I guess. There are obviously a few different tools or other tools that I use from time to time, such as the text tool to write something but they're not really exclusive to Clip Studio Paint, so I do not want to get into those tools. I just wanted to show you the main tools that I use inside of Clip Studio Paint whenever I'm painting or drawing. And um, these are like, I know that it's not a lot. I, I just use like four to five different tools, but they offer me everything that I need to create the artwork that I'm creating and everything else is just like a bonus and extra. And so, yeah. This wraps it up for today's video. I hope it's somewhat helpful to some of you out there. 
And if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I would really, really love you for that. And、um, yeah, also share with your friends, your colleagues, your grandma, anybody who wants to draw. Share my videos with those folks. And as always, guys, thanks for watching my video. I love you guys with all my heart and soul. And until next time, peace.